Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the video. Today's vehicle is an incredibly dirty and furry 2018 Chevy Cruze. I will be doing a full detail on this car today, although most of the work is gonna be on the inside, so let's have a look around. All right, so like I said, the outside isn't actually all that bad, but the car does have a nice layer of dirt all over. The wheels and tires are fairly dirty. And then of course, since this is a GM vehicle, we've got some carpeted wheel well liners to deal with. But moving to the interior, and I honestly was not expecting it to be quite so bad in here, besides the mountains of dirt and debris, there's an absolute pile of dog hair in here, especially in the back where the doggo clearly spent most of his time. There's so much hair in some spots, you can barely see the carpet underneath. And then as you can imagine, the seats are pretty filthy from wet and dirty paws, and even the doors are covered in dirt as well. But if that's not enough, it looks like there was some ramen noodles spilled in here and what appears to be a moldy Timbit, go along with the moldy french fries but just before we jump into all this hair take a quick second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel i post a new video like this every week so if you've got the bell on you won't ever miss out on one all right well you guys can see that this car has pretty well turned into a dog kennel on wheels so it's going to take a fair bit of time to get it looking brand new again and as always sit back relax and enjoy the transformation All right guys, so with a slightly cleaner exterior than I usually see, I can move through the pre-wash friends pretty quick today, but figured I would let you know that I was able to film the owner's reaction when he picked the car up, so you'll definitely want to stick around to the end of the video to catch that. Now as I spray out the other rear wheel well here, this should show you just how much dirt carpeted wheel well liners are capable of holding onto. There was easily 10 times more dirt just in this wheel well than there was on the paint, but even though I really don't like them, it definitely is satisfying getting to see all that dirt just wash out of them. All right, now as I spray the underside of this car off, I know I've seen some questions recently about what extension wand I'm using here, and unfortunately I don't have a link to it as I picked it up from Princess Auto here in Canada a while back, but the link to the actual undercarriage sprayer is in the description if any of you are looking to up your detail game a bit.
Now getting some nice thick foam onto this car to help loosen and lift any remaining dirt and then I'll go around with a Borsair detail brush to safely agitate around any trim emblems behind the gas door and especially in the honeycomb grill to ensure all those areas are nice and clean as my wash mitt is not able to get down into those crevices. Alright, so with the car washed and dried, I'm turning to these filthy and hairy floor mats and the first thing I'll do is get them quickly vacuumed to get all the loose dirt and debris and then I'll use the lily brush as there's a fair bit of dog hair embedded in the fibers and as you've seen in my previous videos, these work really, really well on pet hair. So for any of you out there who have pets that shed either in your vehicle or in the house or maybe you know someone that struggles with pet hair removal, the link to the lily brush is down in the description for you. Alright, with the mats free of dog hair, I'll work on getting them clean now. So spraying on some of my Chemical Guys carpet solution diluted 20 to 1, I'll put down a fair bit, hit it with the drill brush, and then just simply blast them with the pressure washer to get them clean. And even though the two rear mats could have been extracted as they weren't super dirty, the two front ones were far too bad for that. So since I had to spray those ones anyways, it just made sense to do them all the same way.
Alright, so turning to the interior now, and I'll start by getting all the personal items removed from the vehicle so that I can clean inside the glove box and center console later. And down in that little storage compartment in the middle here, it was full of dried up food that was pretty well as hard as a rock and was really stuck on. So I had to very, very carefully dislodge it, which worked well. Although for a second, I did think about grabbing the steamer, but realized that would have just made it a sloppy mess, which would have been way worse to deal with. Okay, so moving to the back, which is easily the dirtiest area of the vehicle, and the process here is simple. Vacuum up all the loose dirt and debris and whatever hair I can quickly get, and then once that's done, I'll use the lily brush for any hair that's left, and the goal here is to remove every single hair that I can see from the vehicle. Even though I'm well aware that the dog will be back in here again, it would feel like cutting corners to me if I gave the vehicle back to the customer with visible hair all over. Now if any of you remember the hairy Dodge Dart I detailed a few months ago and how the fabric on the seats had a sort of weave pattern that really held onto the hair, well luckily for me the fabric in this cruise wasn't near as bad and the hair came out a lot easier, but that being said, with there being so much in here, it's still going to take quite a bit of time to chase down every single hair.
Now for any of you out there who have ever wondered about what vehicle I drive or how I go about detailing my own vehicle, I just posted a video of it on the second channel a few days ago and I'm pretty sure most of you will enjoy it. So make sure you head over there to give it a watch and while you're there, don't forget to subscribe as I post lots of different kinds of videos there every Tuesday, each one as good as the videos that you see here. Now since I'm dealing with that extremely cheap velcro like carpet in this car, I needed to use the drill brush to try to loosen up some of the embedded dirt and as you can see it does manage to pull up quite a bit more out of the carpet. Here's a look at the massive furball that I pulled from this car and this is definitely in the top three for hairiest vehicles that I've seen and then here's all the hair and other dirt the vacuum sucked out of here. Alright now getting started on these dirty back seats and something interesting about this car is that the fabric in here isn't quite as absorbent as I usually see. So after going over it with the drill brush, it really didn't take many passes to get these seats perfectly clean as the dirt just wasn't as embedded as I would have expected it to be. Now because I know there's some very observant people out there, yes I did get a new drill, although I do still have my other one but sadly one of the batteries won't hold a charge anymore, so after a good 10 plus years with it, I picked up an 18 volt Bosch impact drill set and I'm really liking it so far.
as I've probably mentioned in previous videos, this cheaper carpet is definitely harder to extract as whatever touches it just wants to stick to it. So it takes quite a few more passes to get all the solution out. And unfortunately, I'm not expecting them to look perfect when I'm done, but I'll still give them everything I've got to make sure that they're as presentable as possible. Here's the half a bucket full of dirty water pulled from this car. Gross. Now because most of the interior trim is dirty because of the dog, I'm using my all-purpose cleaner diluted 10 to 1 and a damp microfiber towel to clean up the mess. And for the dirt that's trapped in the speaker grill, I'll end up using the steamer down there as I already had it warmed up. But alternatively, you could also use a detail brush and some APC for that type of area. For the center console area where there was a fair bit of grime and really stuck on hair around the gear shifter, I'm using my McCulloch steamer and some APC. And one thing I don't think I've mentioned often is that when you're using a steamer on plastics, you have to be super careful as the steam is incredibly hot. So you always want to be moving the nozzle, never let it sit in one spot for too long or you'll end up turning the plastic white. But that being said, it is the easiest and most effective way to tackle any sort of crud or grime. So if you're looking to pick up a steamer, I would highly recommend the McCulloch MC1375 unit. The link to it and nearly every other product and tool that I use is down in the description for you. Alright, so to boost the gloss on this silver paint, I'm using some of my Meguiar synthetic sealant and I always start by spreading around a toonie sized amount onto my pad to prime it and then I'll add a little bit more before I start on the first panel. Now I didn't show you earlier, but this rear glass was super dirty with dog kisses, but the glass cleaner that I use, which is Auto Finesse Crystal, is able to pretty easily cut through the crud. And then of course, using a waffle weave towel as well is the true secret to street free glass.
guys and nine hours later I'm done with the car that was definitely right up there with one of the hairiest vehicles that I've ever detailed so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and as always enjoy the guitar outro and I'll see you guys in the next one mm -hmm.